Hi, I'm Will Washburn, and today I will be speaking briefly about American theater in the 1800s, specifically around 1830 to 1860, and how theater of the day dealt with American minorities. Specifically, I'll be looking at the Native American woman and the African American man. Around the 1830s, two distinctly American types of theater formed and gained great popularity throughout the country. These were, first, the minstrel show, with its character Jim Crow, and secondly, the Native American drama. In these shows, both the Native American and the African American became a character type. Today we'll be looking at those character types and what their implications were in theater, but also the culture of the day. So we will begin by looking at Jim Crow and minstrelsy. <clears throat> Brockett attributes the rise to the African American character type to Thomas D. Rice and his character Jim Crow, which he first created around 1828. The Columbia Electronic Encyclopedia credits Rice for the first solo performance in blackface and his song and dance routine, Jim Crow, for, for creating this character type. Even though <clears throat> they even go as far as to describe him as the father of American minstrelsy. Um, so Rice created this character, he kind of created this character type with um, blackface and um, kind of emulating African-American culture through song and dance and African-American song and dance of the day. Um, he started this trend, but it was carried out even further um, with the first public performance of a minstrel show, which was given in 1843 by the Virginia Minstrels, um, which were headed by Daniel Decatur Emmett. Although Rice may have, been, may have created this character type, it was the minstrel show that continued it and spread it throughout the country. Not only did these character types portray and create the idea of the African American culture, even the structure and the content of these minstrel shows further that stereotype. Um, Brockett explains how these shows were divided into two parts. The first part, um, the actors were, would form a semicircle with an end man on each end, um, the first one with a tambourine and the one on the other end with a bone, and they became known as the tambo and the bone. Um, and in this first part, it would be almost um, they would sing songs and play music, and there would be a middleman who would be kind of the MC or the master of ceremonies, and he would tell jokes in between the musicals, uh, musical numbers. And the second part of the minstrel show was almost a vaudeville-style variety show with specific acts and specific um, musical numbers and characters. Um, still, all white actors portraying black characters in blackface but these numbers would be more solo acts or individual um, numbers and performances. Um, and so throughout this period, the minstrel show and Jim Crow became a large part of the American theater and um, the entertainment world of that day. And the second type of theater we will be looking at is the Native American drama. So the first Native American drama to reach the American stage was The Indian Princess in 1808. The play was written by James Nelson Barker and was centered around the story of Pocahontas and John Smith and John Rolfe in the Virginian colony. And it started a trend of portraying and telling American stories, specifically American stories, centered around the Native American. Um, George Washington Park Sistus um, followed this trend with it one of um, with some of his more popular plays centered around Native Americans, and those were The Indian Prophecy and Pocahontas. Um, along with his work, there were over 50 other Native American plays produced in the U.S. Um, in this period up until 1860. So, um, like The Minstrel Show, they centered around an American character type, and they gained great popularity. Um, they were far less comedic, they were more drama based with serious actors playing serious roles. Um, Forrest was a popular actor at the time. He was credited for playing a lot of the Native American roles, so it wasn't necessarily like Jim Crow. It wasn't a character type that was to make fun of, but it was nonetheless a character type and kind of furthered American stereotypes of the day. So, next I will be looking at how these types of theater created a type and um, why creating a type is important to this um, realm of theater, but also to the culture of the day. So I found a very interesting essay um, about Jim Crow and how Rice 
came to England and performed, um, and the character Jim Crow came to England and how it kind of had its own culture in England as well. But for the purpose of this um, paper, I looked more at American theater. But in this essay, he gives a lot of great insight to Jim Crow and the character. And um, so what we're going to really be looking at in this section is the character type itself and what it was and how white actors portrayed this type. So in Scriven's essay on Jim Crow, he cites a review of one of Rice's performance, um, which they claim that the personification was the beau ideal of the Negro. They said that his facility of twisting his limbs in such a manner as to represent the distortions of the ill-grown African. Um, the, the Columbia Electronic Encyclopedia also explains how this character was always portrayed by a white actor, well not always, but mainly portrayed by a white actor in blackface with gaudy costumes. Um, so there's a very distinct look and a very distinct way that these characters would walk and sing. Um, they used African American dialect and vernacular of the day. Um, and I thought it was very interesting how in Brockett he explains that there was actually a troupe of black actors that would be in blackface portraying this character type. So it goes to show you that it's not they were trying to, it wasn't that they were trying to portray African Americans in a very realistic and natural way because even black um, and African American actors had to transform to play this type. So it was definitely a type that they were trying to create. And the same was true for the Native American dramas of the day. Um, Afri um, not, excuse me, Native Americans were often portrayed somewhat sympathetically in these dramas, according to Brockett, and he asserts that the characterization of the Native American uh, followed the tradition of the noble savage. Um, so I thought that was interesting that, yes, it is very different from Blackface and Jim Crow, which almost makes fun of African Americans, but nonetheless, it follows a type. Um, it wasn't that they were trying to portray real stories, but it was almost that they had made a specific type and they fit Native American narratives into that, that character type. So lastly, what I want to speak on is why it matters. Um, I lot think a lot of times in history, we look at, a, at theater in 1860 or events in 1860 and we can apply them to today and make them important and real today. Um, so one of the things that I thought was very important about this is it shows how stereotypes in creating a type in theater can be very dangerous and can be very um, derogatory to a whole culture and a whole um, ethnic group. And so not, it's very obvious to see how blackface and Jim Crow belittled and um, really dumbed down African American culture in the 1800s. Um, with the grotesque costumes, gaudy costumes, um, using and misusing African-American vernacular um, for comedy is, is one of the more obvious ways that a character type is destructive to a culture. But I think what's interesting is the Native American narrative and the Native American drama and how that type um, created a false idea of what Native American culture was, was actually like. Um, and I found a really interesting quote from a essay entitled American Indian Females and Stereotypes. And the quote is as follows. As an, as an American Indian female educator, I am aware at earliest observations of American Indian women were written by men who represented the successful colonization, colonialist regimes of France, Great Britain, and America. These men misunderstood tribal kinship systems, gender roles, social values, and tribal spirituality. Their observations reflected their cultural biases and perhaps reflected a desire to manipulate reality to accommodate expectations that American Indian women were to be held in low regard in their tribal societies because women were subservient to men in European societies. So what this quote really gets to the heart of is how um, American theater of the day was run by white white America, white men particularly. Um, there were white women coming onto the scene, but basically these were white male playwrights, white male directors who were portraying blacks and Native Americans and how they took that, that type and used it to um, create kind of the type that they, that they saw. It wasn't a true um, portrayal of what the Native American experience was or the African American 
experience was. Um, so it goes on to explain how um, these plays created, or even media of the day created the idea of the princess, prostitute, or drudge. And there was specific groups that Native American women were placed in. And I think that's what's really important um, about this essay that carries over to the plays that I looked at. Um, the Indian Princess is the other title for Pocahontas. Um, it takes the idea of Pocahontas and kind of strips any of her importance in a way and just puts her into this category of that she's a princess and that um, she's not really anything else but just an exotic kind of something that we can look at and just kind of behold with kind of wonder. It, it takes away her value in a way. Um, and I found another one, another art, uh, essay called The Princess and the Squaw, The Construction of the Native American Woman in Pictorial Press. And it explains how Pocahontas was so celebrated by white culture because of how um, Europeanized she became. Um, the story goes that she saved a white man from the kind of Indian savage. She married a white man and she was baptized a Christian. So she kind of becomes this white American ideal. And we see that in their storytelling process, storytelling process of theater in the period as well. They kind of celebrate Pocahontas and they celebrate the noble savage that has these European ideas or ideals and European attributes. So I think what a really important thing to realize is that it matters because these were two of the mo most popular American types of theater of the day and they had such distinct and often incorrect portrayals of these cultural and ethnic groups. Um, and I think what that can teach us today is, especially as theater artists and even as theater goers, we have to be very aware of how we're portraying cultural types and how we're portraying ethnic groups and being sensitive. Um, even if we think that it's not offensive or it's not um, derogatory outright, we have to really be aware of how we're doing that, especially if it's a culture that we're not from and a culture that's not our own. Um, and so that's what I really learned from this type of theater and these two um, specific types of American theater in this period that going forward as a theater artist, when I'm directing or writing or even acting in a role, I really need to be aware of the culture that I'm trying to portray and that I'm doing it in a way that is accurate and realistic. So that's really what I learned from this, and I hope that you learned something from this presentation that you can apply to your theater life as well. Um, thank you for listening, and have a good day.